Let's begin. Uh, so, as I've said just recently here, we'll get rid of explosion. The one page that you have has explosion on the back, so you can ignore that. The, the one that's on the back. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, here you have a little picture of one, and as before, the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. So in this case here, we have this blue ball sphere, and it's, it's running into this green one here, and you can see that the blue one is bigger than the green one, and so the green one goes off like this, and the blue one goes off like this. And as soon as you see that, I'm hoping you're thinking, oh, hey, this will be easy. This is just X and Y components. Right? Yeah. yeah, I know you don't have the picture. I know you don't. No. I'm just, I'm just giving you the so is intro. Have we learned anything since like the one-dimensional stuff? No? Yesterday I went to the electric field test. And Friday we did... So what was? I'm just trying to remember. Oh, uh, sorry, work and energy. Great 11. Work and energy. I don't remember Friday, but it's, I'm sure it's on Schoology. Okay, I'm going to ignore the videos because we really need to get going. So, Let's just go right to this one. Two, this is from the textbook, by the way. Two identical curling stones of mass 19.5 kilograms collide. As shown, the first stone hits the second stone with a velocity of 5 meters per second at north. If the velocity of the first stone is 3.2 north, 30 west after collision, find the velocity of the second stone after collision. Omit friction. You have no picture, right? Neither do I. Okay, so the stationary second stone. How about we label them A and B, and I'll even draw them in different colors. Okay, so we've got curling rock A here running into curling rock B. And this one is traveling at 5 meters per second, right? What's going to happen? Even if you're not a curler, you should know that What's going to happen here? <laughs> Back to our regularity schedule program. First stone hits the secondary stone with a velocity of 5 per second. If the velocity of the first stone is 3.2 north, 30 west. So in other words, the black one goes and then goes like this, right? And which, if the black one goes like this, then the blue one's going to go like that. And the momentum must be conserved. Okay, so after the fact, you've got the black one headed like this at north 30 west, and you've got the blue one going like that, right? At some unknown angle, and at some unknown speed. And we are to find the velocity of the second stone after the collision at first. That's going 33.2? The first one is going at 3.2 after, right? Okay, and it's originally going five. Okay, how are we going to attack this? What's going to be our steps here? What do you think? Find the. Should we start by finding the velocity of the curling rock? A. Yeah. Let's start with that. We do. Oh, I meant the momentum. Sorry, not the velocity. Momentum, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's find momentum of A initially, right? Okay. It's going to be mass times velocity, so it's simply going to be 19.5. And why didn't I make that 20? That's stupid. 19.5 times 5, which is a little less than 100. 97.5. Kilogram meters per second, and you should include the direction north. This means that the final momentum must also be 97.5 kilometers per second north, is it not? Because the initial momentum, which is just the black rock must equal the final momentum, which I will point out is the momentum of the black rock plus the momentum of the blue rock. Initial momentum, Hannah, is equal to final momentum. The total momentum must be the same. 
right? Okay. Now, because it's in two dimensions, we're going to have to go back, way back in our way back time machine, to components. Let's say that up and down is our y component, and our left and right is our x. Okay, makes sense. So, the initial x momentum is how much? Left, right? Zero. zero. Well done. The initial x momentum is zero because the black rock is just going up and down, right? What is what is the initial y momentum? 97.5. And we'll define up to be positive, right? Yeah? Okay, we're in a good setup now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just slide these over a little bit here, give myself a little more room. I'm going to take this black one right here. And I'm going to call this P A X prime and P A Y prime. What do those stand for? Momentum of rock A, the X component after the collision. And momentum of rock A, Y component after collision, right? Well, I think you mean, okay, never mind. You're good? Yeah. Okay. And we know that it's 3.2, right? So this number here, maybe I should, just before I do all this, right? Momentum of A prime after is 19.5. Times 3.2. I'm going to find the momentum of rock A. Just without a direction. Just just the magnitude. 19.5 times 3.2. 62.4. That's, that's this part of the triangle, right? Okay, so that means then that PAX prime is going to be 62.4 opposite, which is sine or cos? Sine. Sine. I took 19.5 times 3.2. Anything else we need to add there? Sure. Yep. So is the 62.4, is that going to be like the hypotenuse? That's the hypotenuse, yep. Do you want me to write it in there, Steve? Okay. So the x component of rock A is 31.2, right? Y of negative, because it's going left. P A Y after collision is going to be 62.4 cos 30. Fifty four. Op is positive, right? Okay. This is really an example of vector subtraction. PI, the initial x component is zero, right? And PI x must equal PFx, right? The initial x momentum must equal the final x momentum, and the initial x momentum was zero. And PFx is made up of PAx prime plus PB x prime, the x components of the two rocks. And PA x prime is minus 31.2. Which means PB x prime is 31.2.
the x components are going to be the same after the collision. Why? Because there was no x component to begin with. I'm just showing the steps, right? I mean, you could just come out and say it, but this is the mathematical sort of process to show it. Who said they're really confused? Which which part, Hannah? Okay. I'll come back and talk to you individually. Would you agree that P I Y is equal to P F Y? Are the Y components the same after the collision? Yes, they have to be. Momentum must be conserved. And P I Y is equal to not zero, but 97.5. Right? That was the black rock's momentum headed straight north. This is rock A, Hannah, and this is rock B. No, no, I've talked about A and B together. I'm always talking about both. I'm always talking about both. PFY is made up of what two rocks, Hannah? P A, I guess. P A Y prime plus P B Y prime. The final Y momentum is rock A's Y component plus rock B's Y component. Do I know either one of A's or Y's components? Are you sure? I know A. I know A's. It's right there. It's this plus 54, right? 97.5 is equal to 54 plus PBY prime, which makes PBY prime equal to 97.5 minus 54. Forty-three point five. Is that a nod of agreement, Mandy? The resistance. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just looking for feedback around the room. I like seeing nods. Okay. What would you do next? And. And that would be the. Velocity. Would it be the velocity? It'd be the momentum of. B. Rock B after the collision. Basically, what we did way back when, back in February, right? We broke it into components, we did our adding and subtracting, and now we're putting them back together again. Same process. So X is 31.2, which is this way. The Y is 43.5, which is this way. And this is momentum B, momentum of rock B after collision. And we're going to do that squaring thing that Pythagoras taught us. I'm hoping that you can do Pythagoras without showing all your work now. PB prime squared. This one here, this one squared. Yeah. What is the unit for momentum? Yeah. Kilogram meters per second. So is, it, is that K meters per second? KGM slash S. It doesn't have a name. Yeah. Probably never will. 50, I get 53.5. 53.5, and you're asking me kilogram meters per second, right? That's the physics equivalent to dropping the mic. Dropping the calculator. Pretty good. Yeah, you like that? That one you liked, eh? Well, I'm glad I gave you a little laugh before you graduate.
What's the next step? Last one. Uh, oh, is it? Sorry, actually, there's two steps. Find the angle and find the velocity, right? How are we going to find velocity? PB is mass times velocity. 53.5. The mass of the rock was 19.5. What kind of speed would you expect? Something less than 5? If the initial rock was moving at 5, right? It ain't going to move any faster if it's the same size. I haven't got a cigarette in their mouth or not. <laughs> oh, I so hope I can find that video. Can you imagine that they actually allowed that? Yeah, they weren't really athletes, no. Yeah, probably. You guys have no idea what it was like. I get 54 degrees. What did you, uh, how did you do it, if you don't mind me asking? I couldn't get it. What did you get? Ten inverse. Inverse 10, right? Opposite over adjacent. What did you get for degrees? Uh, 54.4. 3.5. And that would be uh, west, 54.4 north, right? Are you in degrees or my? No, I'm in degrees. There you go. If it's in degrees, it's got to be less than 90. Or would it be west? It's west. It's not west. It's not west. East. Not west. It's not west. It's west. It's west. That's west. Okay. Let's go back and let's look at the steps, right? Let's describe the steps. So what did I do? I found the initial momentum by taking the mass of rock A times the velocity. It's 97.5 kilometers. Kilogram. Kilogram meters per second. North. Then I found the momentum of rock A after the collision. It was 19.5 times 3.2, or 62.4 at that 30 degree angle. And I broke those into X and Y components. One being to the left, X negative, one being up positive. And then I said that the initial momentum, the initial X must equal the final X. And the initial X was zero because the rock was only going straight up. And the final x of rock A was minus 31.2, and therefore the x component of rock B is 31.2. Positive. Wait, how do we get 31.2 again? From a triangle? Uh, so 62.4 times the sine of 30. I found this sine here. Right, it made a new triangle. Wait, so what do we do with collisions or explosions? This is collisions. I'm getting rid of explosions. A collision. Explosion means you got more of when you're done. Pieces. Oh. You hucked it hard enough. Okay. Yeah, you hucked it hard enough. P I Y. Are you getting rid of all explosions? Just two dimensional. When there's like a two things put together and they go apart like this. Yeah, we did that just yesterday. Or the day before. Like, yeah, when it's like breaks into three pieces. Yeah. That's the velocity of this piece and this piece. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We did it. We did it. And the one direction was just... Yeah. We did it, you guys. Okay, PIY. So then, PIY is 97.5. The final Y component of A is 54, so I take it to the other side, and I get the Y component of B, that's 43.5. And now I've got my X and Y components of B. I recombine them using Pythagoras and get 53.5 kilogram meters per second. That's units of momentum. I divide, divide by the velocity, divide by the mass to get the velocity, and I find the angle. Why would P-I-Y, P-I-P-A, what does it get? Why does Where, Hannah, huh? sorry? P-I-Y, P-A-I, yeah. saying Y. Can you show me on here? I'm not. Yeah, yeah, you're there. Scroll up to the very top. Here? 
Right here. No, you keep going when you have the PAI thing. Oh. What does that even do? The, the initial. Heather, I can't talk over top of you. If you want to have a conversation, go outside. Are you making a choice? You're not? You're choosing to stay. Okay. PAY is the momentum of rock A, the initial momentum half. It's the mass of rock A. It's moving at 5 meters per second. Right? And it's 19 by 5. 19 by 5 times 5 is 97.5. The initial, total initial momentum must be equal to the total final momentum. That is the fundamental consideration for this entire thing. The initial momentum must be equal to the final. It must, it must, it must. It is the stru uh, structure, the framework for every single problem. How is that part relevant to any of the other stuff? Because the, the initial x has to be initial uh, Has to be initial final x. final x, and initial y must be equal to final y. The initial x, Hannah, is zero. It's right there. Yeah, I got that. Okay? The Final x must also be equal to zero. Pix is zero. Pfx is also zero. Pfx is made up of the x components of A and B together. Thirty-one minus thirty-one point two plus thirty-one point two gives us zero. The sum, the total x components, must equal zero. And the total y components must add up to 97.5 because that's what you started with for y. Do they? 43.5 and 54 add up to 97.5. How many marks do you think? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, thirty-one point two, seven, maybe eight. This only gives one question. So that's like a third of the test. Thirty-one point two. This test be like three questions. You know it's not three. Open book. You got a cheat sheet. Oh, I've seen kids write just about everything on cheat. I've seen kids write out like sentences. I'm like, why are they writing that? Al said he wrote out every single type of problem from every unit. Yeah, and and like and they write out like the longest age student wearing striped suspenders and tan pants and blah, I'm like, why are you writing that? <laughs> I guess, I don't know, I mean, I just made that up on the spot, but just was like, really, the most ridiculous things they put on these samples, I'm like, holy moly, it's an object, it weighs five kilograms, no, there. Okay, here's the next one, so flip your sheet over, put an X through it, that's an explosion, ignore. This, my friends, is elastic or inelastic? Too late. It's elastic. Why is it elastic? Because it bounces. It bounces. Non-elastic is when it sticks together. Yeah, that's inelastic. This one is in e oh can't spell. Inelastic. This is exactly the stuff that the RCMP dude does. He looks at two cars and sees them schmuck together and figures out, okay, who's going fast? Because he does weird formulas. Well, fair enough. Like that part where he... 2,000 kilogram cars are meeting at an intersection. No, 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 we're not doing explosions. This is an inelastic 2D collision. Oh, we have to write this question down. No, it's on a second sheet. Car B is traveling at 20 meters per second east, and car R is traveling at 10 meters per second north. After the crash, they stick together. Stick together means 
inelastic. And it means the mass after the collision is the sum of both masses. Well said, John. Well said. 2,000. What is their combined velocity after the collision? Does your intuition tell you that the velocity is going to be less? Because it's more massive, right? Newton's second law. Okay. Is this a component thing? Of course, it's two dimensions. Is the initial momentum equal to the final momentum? Of course, it is for every single one. And that means that PIX is equal to PFX. And it means that PIY is equal to PFY. By the way, these are absolutely horrible to mark, if that gives you any consolation whatsoever. While they may be difficult to solve, imagine trying to mark 20 different ones. Especially, so let us find the X and Y components. Now, actually, this is pretty easy because car, blue car here, car blue car, Car B has only X, right? And car red has only Y. Right? So P B X is how much? P it's the mass, a thousand times twenty, right? 1,000 times 20, or 20,000, and you're right, east. If you want to write east, fine. If you want to write plus, also good, or both. Is there any other X component before collision? There is not. Let's go to Y. P, R, Y is also mass times velocity. R standing for red. It also is a thousand kilos, and its velocity is only ten. Ten thousand. North. Are there any other X? No. Are there any other Y? Okay, so this tells us that PX final or prime is also 20,000, right? Okay. It's, no, look, it's still to the right, isn't it? Remember, they're not bouncing. In fact, everything here is conveniently positive. Well, it says east and north in the question. Yeah. So you could draw that. I mean, if you draw east and north, you're basically going to get that without the fancy animation. So P Y prime would be ten thousand. So what's the total momentum after? Well, that would be the here's the recombining part, right? Putting them back together. What do you want to call the after thing? It's not B, it's not R. You want to call it BR or RB or whatever? Okay. Okay. Momentum of BR is going to be Should I draw a picture here? Yeah, I should. What's PBR? Momentum of the crash, the, the whole thing together. That's a good point. So it's going to be. Ryan knows what PBR is. Yeah? Dare I ask Ryan? <laughs> we just made that up. <laughs> Okay, PBR, P, PBRX, I guess, P, 
PBRY, and those are equal to those numbers there, are they not? Which numbers? The 20 and the 10. Would you agree that the hardest part about these questions is the the structure of the solution, like how to put it all together and how to like yeah. label stuff and all that? Absolutely, and I get that, I do. Which is why marking it is such a nightmare because everyone does their own way. So if in doubt, show your work. Zach. There's never too much work to be shown. So, PBR squared is equal to 20,000 squared plus 10,000 squared. I feel like we skipped a step compared to the last one. Yeah, this one's actually relatively easy. Why is that? Because... We both have a zero on the X and Y. Yeah, because, because each one comes with only one component, and it's already given to... We didn't have to... We didn't need components this time. Well, you're right. They came in component form already. Yeah. Really, right? How would what would make this question harder? If they went off not together, I More guess. Numbers. Or if they were coming in at an angle like that? Yeah. That'd be really hard, right? Wouldn't that be just like So how is this different from the last question? Well, the one main difference is that they stick together. Well, last question, it was like we had to find PBX and then PAX and add them together. Right? Maybe not. Remember, the after collision, remember there's two pieces after. Here, there's only one piece after. They're together after, right? Let, let me finish here and then I'll let you guys ask questions. Okay, so this is going to be 20,000 squared plus 10,000 squared. Take the square root of that. 22,361. 22,361. PB. R, yes. The momentum of the final 22,361 kilogram meters per second. That is the momentum of the crash unit. But we want to know the velocity 22,361. Here's where you have to do what? Add the masses. Very good, Braden. 2,000. Very good, very good. Did I just say 2,236? 22,361 kilogram meters. Yeah, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? I get 11.2 meters per second. Is that a reasonable volume? 11.2, is that reasonable if this one's going 20 and that one's going 10? Yeah. What's the answer in the animation here? It oh, it just says, yeah, no, the moment. Yeah. Kevin Angle, I was just thinking. Yeah. velocity What he said. Yeah, it'd be a whole lot easier on me. Twenty-seven degrees. So that's going to be east, twenty-seven north. Yeah, and the crazy eddy comes close. Well,